When it comes to wildlife, Japan is one of the most interesting places in the world. Its landscapes and animals vary greatly from the north to the south, and it's home to plenty of species that can't be found anywhere else in the world. Even though Japan has quite a substantial population of around 125 million people, there still is plenty of space for wildlife. This is mostly due down to Japan being very mountainous, and this mountainous landscape has led to megacities and large areas of untouched land where it's impossible to build. Just like many other large countries around the world, Japan also has some problem invasive species. These species can be found all over Japan, and are bad news both for the Japanese ecosystem and also the Japanese economy. Luckily, Japan is home to some native species that are happy to fight back, and some even directly target invasive species. In this video, I will be going through just a few of these creatures, as I will be going through three Japanese animals that help to hunt and control invasive species. Our first problem species isn't just invasive in Japan, but is invasive in many countries around the world. I am talking about the koipu, which also goes by the name of Nutria. This large herbivorous semi-aquatic rodent almost looks like a beefed up muskrat, and they do play a similar role in their respective ecosystems. Strangely, the muskrat is also invasive in Japan, but I have chosen to go with the koipu as it is much larger and causes more of a problem. Now, the koipu or natria is native to South America and was imported all around the world for its fur. This was why it was introduced into Japan, and the first introductions happened during the war in around 1939. Koipu fur farms were set up for both military and consumer use, but en masse, many of these koipu escaped or were released. When these rodents escaped, they didn't only compete with the native species, but they also completely ruined habitats and had a massive negative effect on farming. Japan is a large producer of many crops, but one of the most famous crops that it produces is rice. Rice is grown in rice paddies, and these rice paddies produce habitats for plenty of creatures. When koipu move into areas with lots of rice paddies, they don't only damage them, but they can completely drain them. Koipu dig burrows into banks of rivers, and they also do this into the banks of rice paddies. This can sometimes cause them to collapse, and this completely drains the rice paddy and floods the surrounding area. This of course affects the crop yield, and also affects all the smaller creatures that are living in the rice paddy. They not only do this in an agricultural setting, but they also do it in the wild, and this can have negative effects on a whole host of other creatures, including large ground nesting birds. Their numbers are so large in Japan that it may seem almost impossible to control them, but there are a few species that will happily help out. Possibly the most famous of these species is the Japanese black bear. The Japanese black bear is a subspecies of the Asian black bear, and lives on two of the main islands of Japan, Honshu and Shikoku. Despite this, almost all Japanese black bears are found on Honshu, as the population on Shikoku is thought to be less than 30 individuals. This bear did once exist in Kyushu, but was thought to have gone extinct there in around 1987. One of the main reasons behind their decline is poaching, as people fear that they may be attacked by this bear, and also their body parts go for a high price on the black market. This subspecies of black bear is typically smaller than the Asian black bear, and it lives a mostly herbivorous lifestyle. They mostly feed on grasses and herbs during the spring, and then move on to berries and nuts in the summer. Although it is quite rare, these bears will also feed on other animals, with some of their favourite prey animals being the Japanese sero, wild boar, and seeker deer. But if this bear wants a slightly easier meal, all it has to do is head over to the wetlands. These bears will go after koipu, and they are one of the few large mammalian predators in Japan that can take them down. Strangely, the lack of large predators in Japan is one of the reasons why the koipu has been able to spread so easily, and the decline of the Japanese black bear is only going to help them. Really, I hope more can be done to protect this bear in the future, as it is one of the few predators that helps to control the koipu. Our next problem species is possibly the most famous invasive species in Japan, and it is the raccoon. Now, just like the koipu, the raccoon has been introduced into many countries around the world and is a massive problem in Central Europe and, of course, Japan. One of the main reasons why the raccoon is such a successful invasive species is simply because it's so intelligent and so good at adapting. Raccoons do very well both in the wild and in urban areas, and once they become established, they're very hard to get rid of. The raccoon was first introduced into Japan in the late 50s and early 60s, but the vast majority of them were introduced in the late 70s. This was after the release of the anime series Rascal the Raccoon, and after seeing this, many people wanted a raccoon of their own. 
After the release of Rascal the Raccoon, around 1,500 raccoons were imported as pets each year. Some of these pets were either discarded or escaped, and they can now be found in 42 of the 47 prefectures. These raccoons have proven to be a massive negative impact on both the ecosystem and the economy, as it's estimated that raccoons cause around 30 million yen of agricultural damage on Hokkaido alone. These raccoons also directly feed on many of the native creatures, such as the native snakes and amphibians. As I'm sure many of you Americans know, they also go through people's garbage, and they're known to spread diseases to the native mammals. Because a lot of the raccoon population in Japan are found around cities, it can be very hard for the native species to fight back. Not many large predators can be found in cities, but there is one native creature that's very at home in urban areas. The Japanese raccoon dog also goes by the name of Tanuki, and is a canid endemic to Japan. Although it has raccoon in its name, it's not closely related to the raccoon, and it's thought to have got this common name because of the markings on its face. The tanuki is a very important animal when it comes to Japanese culture and folklore, and they're often seen as a very good creature to have around. Tanuki are reputed to be mischievous and jolly, and in Japanese folklore they are also seen as masters of disguise, shape-shifting, but are also sometimes gullible and absent-minded. These animals are relatively common in Japanese art, and this is especially the case when it comes to statues. If you've been to Japan, you've probably seen plenty of tanuki statues, as they're often placed outside of shops and restaurants. These tanuki statues are a symbol of good luck and fortune, and are usually quite cute until you look below the waist. Because the raccoon and tanuki are around the same size, the tanuki will not target the raccoon directly, but instead they can help to control their numbers by competing with them. Both of these mammals are found in the same habitats, and are in the same ecological niche. The tanuki is also at home in cities, so wherever the raccoon goes it will have to compete with the tanuki. Over the years, the introduction of the raccoon has had a negative impact on the tanuki's numbers, but if the tanuki wasn't around, the raccoon numbers in Japan would be a lot larger. And even though the tanuki cannot directly take down the raccoon, at least it does play a very small role in controlling their numbers. For our final problem species, we will be heading into the freshwaters, and really there is a lot of problem species to choose from. Japan is home to a large number of invasive fish, with many of them coming from North America. Channel catfish, bluegill, smallmouth and largemouth bass can be found in Japan. But in today's video I will be focusing on another North American invader. The rainbow trout is one of the prettier North American freshwater fish. And just like the previous two problem species, it has been introduced into many countries around the world. In most places where the rainbow trout is introduced, it is introduced as a sport fish and as a food fish. Trout are loved by fishermen as they both put up a good fight and also taste very good for a freshwater fish. This is exactly why they were introduced into Japan, and it is also the reason why many of the other North American fish have also been introduced. The rainbow trout has had a negative impact on the native crustacean species, and it has also had a negative impact on the native fish. Japan has quite a few native trout and salmon, and the rainbow trout not only competes with them, but also hybridizes with them. Luckily in Japan there are quite a few native species that will happily target these trout, but one of them is really quite unique. The Japanese giant salamander truly is a giant, as it is the second largest salamander in the world. It's second only to the giant Chinese salamander, and it is very closely related to this species. These amphibians are typically found in fast-flowing mountain streams, and this sort of habitat is exactly where you'll find trout and salmon. These salamanders mostly hunt at night, where they can catch their prey off guard. This prey can be anything from crayfish to small mammals, but the majority of their diet is made up of fish. This salamander is known to feed on both the native and invasive fish, and even though it does play a small role in controlling their numbers, the Japanese giant salamander itself is decreasing in number. They're heavily affected by pollution and habitat loss, but luckily for the overall Japanese ecosystem, there are plenty of other native predators that will happily target the rainbow trout. If you know of any other species that could have made it on this list, then let me know down in the comments below. And as I always say in these videos, invasive species should not be villainized, but there is a reason why we tried to get rid of them. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.